with the help of the neighbors, Motsamai got experience and he finally gave him a chance to go and choose his own territory where he is going to hunt. Neighbors allowed Motsamai to be with them for a week so that he can see how they do things. He can see how they use other baits to bring more baits. He can see why he shouldn't pull the rope early, why he should wait for more baits to be around the circle so that he can pull the rope. So Motsamai learned everything and he got his chance to go and select his place where he will be hunting. And he made sure that his hunting space, it is not far from the neighbors. Simply because of the neighbors were doing it right. There was this older brother who was experienced, who knew everything. He was taught well and he was always hunting with his younger brother. And that younger brother was a friend to Mutsamai. And that's why it was easy for him to teach Motsamai simply because of Motsamai was a best friend to his younger brother. Now he was looking after the two friends, making sure that they are safe since during that time, there were people who understood that there were more boys who are going hunting and those people were hunting people, if I may say, so that I can be safe on YouTube. While men are hunting birds there were human hunters during those days and i will share the story why they were hunting humans during those days simply because of there was this myth or this story whereby they were saying top business people they needed certain things so that their business can boom now motamai got his own place where he was just hunting for his family and during those days it's either you go to hunting with your own food or else people in your family, girls, they will bring food during lunchtime. And they were always making sure that when they get to the place where you're hunting, because it was your responsibility to let them know your hunting ground. So that during the day when girls are bringing food, lunch, they know exactly where to go and they know that they, must, they mustn't make noise they must be very quiet and they must stand a tree bit far from your hiding place so that they won't scare those birds. Because if they just walk, girls are just walking and talking about a lot of stuff, they might scare those birds and the hunter might be a bit angry of saying, because of you, today we cannot eat simply because of you made noise and those birds, they flew away simply because of you made noise. So girls knew exactly that they were supposed to keep silence and they must walk slowly and hide behind trees and see if the hunter will give them a signal. When the hunter see them, will call them by hand and they know that it is okay for them to walk there and give the hunter food. That's how things were done during those days. Now, because of there was this rush hour of people wanting to have meat because that was a source of meat since people couldn't afford to buy meat in the butchery you know that was a source of meat and it was also business whereby people were selling so many families decided to send their children to go and represent them unfortunately others didn't have people who can teach them others didn't have people who were there looking after them and that's the reason why those human hunters were getting opportunities by finding, you know, 12 year old boys hunting somewhere far from the village alone, simply because of most territories which were closer to home were taken by those people who started hunting early. Those people who picked those spots, you know, they chose places which were not too far from the village so that even if when their sisters are bringing food they cannot walk the distance they can still be safe now because of now most of the forest were like taken by different boys or men from the families that's why others they were forced to go far from the village so that they can find their own spaces and pick the space where they can hunt without anybody you know telling them that they're making noise or they're too close to their hunting ground and that's when there were easy targets for those who were 
hunting humans. Until one day when this other family sent boys who were very young, the older boy was like 15 and the younger brother was 11. And they went there so that they can also go and hunt to represent their family. And they just looked at how people are doing things. They didn't follow all the procedure. So when they were doing their trap and everything, they started by putting the first two steel rods. They drove those steel rods to the ground and they put the other steel rod behind the circle. But the biggest mistake that the older brother made was being lazy not to make sure that he drive the steel rod deep enough so that even if when he's pulling it, nothing can happen. And unfortunately, one of those days when he's hunting, when he is in a hurry, wanting to pull the steel rod again after he just had few birds in his bucket, one of the steel rod from the right hand hand left the ground with force since he was pulling the wire with power because people had this thing that the more you put old tubes the more you put old tubes is the more you are going to feel the power to that wire and when that wire goes with force when you pull the rope it will kill as many birds as it can that's the you know, thing that people were telling each other that in order for you to have more beds or whatever that you are hunting, make sure that those tubes are strong enough. Not knowing that if those tubes are too strong and you didn't drive down that rod deep enough to sustain the power when you are pulling the wire using those tubes, that rod might come out of that ground. And we don't know where it might land. And on this situation, it landed right next to the 15-year-old's ear. It was stuck on his head. The 11-year-old didn't know what to do. All he did was scream as loud as he can, asking for help. People went there to help the young man, the 15-year-old brother. It was one of the scariest experiences that Mozamai saw with his friends. They had to call the ambulance. It was far. They organized the transport. Others rushed home to tell the parents so that they can see what was going on. And he was taken to the hospital. That was the last time Mozamai saw the 15-year-old friend who was staying a street apart from Mozamai Street. So those were the experiences that Mozamai faced when he was young. And he couldn't play with his friend anymore because he thought, you know, he will come back. Maybe it is not a big deal. But a rumor said the young man became mentally disturbed, but he survived that accident. He survived that tragedy, but it was so painful in a way that parents told their children not to go hunting anymore. They suspected that, you know, there was a voodoo or a case which was done so that these young men who go hunting can end up losing their lives. Mapoko and her mother, they sat down with Mozamai and they told him that he's doing well, but he should stop going there simply because of it's not only that incident or that accident that happened and made people start questioning people were also worried about the human hunters because they were concerned about what if their child will be next. So Mutamai couldn't hunt anymore. He had, he had to be this young man who is just walking around the village. 
not doing much. Friends that you used to play soccer with, who are a street away, they are no longer there simply because of their family decided to move from the village to another. 